Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> this video is titled The Origin and End of the Global Model. Okay, I have some reading to do, and <clears throat> then I have some diagrams to show. Okay, <clears throat> we were led to believe that there was a measured radius value for a globe earth, but this was actually never true. As really all the globe earth is, is a calculation that was based in the ignoring of the very process that created it, along with the ignoring of natural everyday perspective. Two people throughout history have been claimed to have measured a radius to a sphere of earth. Al-Biruni and Eratosthenes, but the truth is that they never actually measured anything to do with a sphere. Well, Al-Biruni and Eratosthenes uh, before him uh, are both officially claimed to have done is refer to the mathematics of Pythagoras and what element of mathematics and geometry is Pythagoras most famous for? The right triangle, also known as a Pythagorean right angle. And what was determined through the use of this <coughs> right triangle was the angle to celestial bodies, in particular the angle to Polaris. Angles to Polaris give the world a latitude and longitude grid, as if you move away due south from Polaris, it will appear to drop in the sky a determined amount, amount as per the distance you create from it. It was noted that for every set amount that someone moved due south of, uh, of Polaris, it would appear to drop towards the horizon by one degree, and it would continue to do this as someone moved due south from it until it reached zero degrees. So, through the use of a protractor on a plumb bob, the claim could be made that the reason for Polaris appearing to drop at this set rate was because the sky, like the top of a protractor, was curved. So the further claim could then be made that the earth itself is curved and not the sky. And if this same protractor was placed at the center of a sphere using the same angles, it would determine a size. So it was worked out that if Polaris appeared to have dropped a certain amount, as per a certain distance moved southward from it, then that would give a surface distance that would match the angle change and allow for a distance that could be determined mathematically via the center point of a sphere with angled lines. It was all falling into place, as once the angled lines from the center could match the determined distance, then they had a radius, and from this radius they could gain a diameter and circumference. Happy days! And this is why the globe Earth's radius is 3959 miles as an average, and its equator is 24,940 miles. You see, if we look at what Eratosthenes actually did, he measured a north-south, south-north line across a flat plane, basically just a portion of a flat diameter, and all he had to do is match his measurements with a referral to Pythagorean geometry, which used the centre of a sphere as a pre-assumption, and he did this by declaring that the sun's light came in, came in via parallel rays, as he needed to match the shadows with a spherical belief. But everybody and their dog knows that the light from the sun, just like all light, diverges as it is seen to do every single day. But Eratosthenes needed to match the shadows he saw with a spherical belief. Then Al Biruni had to claim that he was sending a tangent line to a geometric horizon, but this is after he measured the height of the mountain he chose using planar geometry. And all he actually did after this point was measure a dip angle to the flat surface under, under the mountain and then refer once more to Pythagorean geometry. Just like Eratosthenes, the curve, the, uh, the, uh, sorry, just like Eratosthenes, and curve the observation he needed a flatter to create. This is the reason why the globe Earth's geometric horizon is only in the maths, as it requires real world observations taken over a flat plane to be poisoned with a pre assumption of curvature. So, to recap, <clears throat> 1. They first pre-assumed that the sky was curved. 2. They then determined that the earth was curved and not the sky. 3. They then determined a radius to this claimed curved earth by, by using, sorry, earth using angle lines from a pre-assumed center point by matching the distances with an apparent Polaris drop. 4. They then determined a diameter and equator circumference distance uh, from this radius that was only calculated via a concept of philosophical origins. Five, and they did all this by ignoring the process they used and natural perspective. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what they did. As someone would move away from Polaris, it would appear to drop. Okay, so it was determined that if someone was moving away on a curved surface, then the from the center of that spherical, uh, from the center of that sphere, then the angle from the center would match the distance. Um, <clears throat> that the person would move away. So let's say so I have 
190 here and then this this red arrow here is showing the angled change from 90 for this person then there's an angle change from 90 from this person uh for that's for for this person sorry and an angle change from 90 for this person all two polaris so it was determined that if if the if they ignored the fact that they needed a 90 which is a horizontal baseline to take these angles from the surface in the first place that they could and ignore perspective where things will always appear to drop uh, as you move away from them as is shown with you know a very straight road with uh, street lamps on it perfect example it will all the street lamps will continually appear to drop but yet they're all at the same elevation but to you if you were taking angles to them they would they all the angles would be decreasing from 90 and eventually if the road was long enough it would get to zero it would just be a light on your horizon that's all it would be yet the road would never need to curve so that's all they actually did they ignored the process which is the need of a flat plane a 90 degree angle uh, a Pythagorean right angle right they ignored that process that they needed to use on the surface to get these angles and then they ignored perspective completely and that's how they made it work and they just you back engineered it through angles from the center of a sphere and they determined the radius and size of that sphere via angles from its center to match the distances moved south from Polaris and that's all they did I'm just going to show you watch watch uh, it's going to change the color on that Sorry. That. If I move this up and move it out and move it out, flat plane makes no difference. I use this arrow from here. Look at that angle change all it is that's all it ever was they needed this 90 degrees they needed the 90 they needed this right to make that work that's a bit wild to make that work they needed that they needed a horizontal plane to make any of this work and even from the center of their globe they needed a horizontal plane they needed a 90 a direct zenith to um, two Polaris and horizontal baseline. So they created the globe of a flat earth and they just use philosophical means and right triangles matching distances from uh, distances that were moving due south uh, from Polaris and they ignored the process they needed to use to get these angles and they ignored perspective and that's the only reason that the radius of the globe is 3959 miles it can't be less and it can't be more because their globe has to match the sky it has to match the celestial uh, sphere it has to match the celestial globe it's only called a celestial globe because of perspective that's the only reason it was ever called a celestial sphere, a celestial globe, because it appears that way. It was a way of uh, describing it. Maybe people weren't understanding perspective, but we know now, true, and they have known in celestial navigation, that there is no determined height to the celestial objects. They all appear to be at the same height, whatever the height that is, because none of them change in their elevation in accordance with the surface of the earth they only change in their angle uh, as per their distance from an observer or the observer's distance from them whichever so there is no globe earth it never existed it was only philosophical it purely came from right triangles pythagorean right triangles that's why they always referred to pythagoras because they needed to use his right triangle from the center of a pre-assumed sphere ignore perspective ignore that they needed the surface of the earth a flat surface to create a flat horizontal surface to create the angles in the first place they needed a 90 and all they had to do then was transfer it to the center of a pre-assumed globe 
and match the angles that would be coming from that center with the distances traveled away from um, uh, away from due north and <clears throat> then they could give themselves a, a spherical size which became a 3959 uh, mile radius as average statue of miles so there is no globe there never was we were duped it's only mathematical it's only philosophical that's all it was that's all it was thanks for watching